Good afternoon everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Recently I did a video on the uh, Sweetwater Princeton amplifier um, and that's what you're looking at right now. Uh, I was looking through the comments and I had a, a gentleman that uh, commented that it sounded like I had the vibrato on the whole time I was doing the, uh, the demonstration and uh, I only demonstrated the vibrato for a very short segment of that uh, initial demonstration. Uh, right now I'm going to just play a couple of chords for you and then I'm going to talk to you for just a second. And I, just so you'll know, I am using a, a Fender uh, Broadcaster reissue uh, for this demo. Last time I used a Les Paul Standard and I'll, I'll explain why I did that also. But here we go. I'm doing this at lower volumes so that you can hear the amplifier with the bright cap in every single knob on this amp other than the volume is at its minimum setting of one alright I'm going to use the neck pickup listened to the video I listened and I did hear where it sounded like the vibrato might be on but it was not and a lot of my recordings that I do when I'm demonstrating products I would just simply use a shotgun mic I don't run it through any mixers or any filters or anything like that what you get is a true representation of the amp uh, most of your your uh, demo folks don't do it that way but that's how I do it uh, even at that, your human ear is going to hear it differently than what you hear it now. There is simply no way to duplicate an amplifier, microphone, anything of that nature uh, in its truest form. There's just no way of doing it. The best way, of course, is for you to go and listen. But I'll do my best to kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. The reason it sounded like there was a lot of vibrato in there is because of the... Uh, the fact, you know, that there is no such thing as perfect intonation on a guitar. Uh, there's no way you can do it unless you intoned, intonated it at every fret, and then it's still not going to work because of the imperfections. Uh, the second thing that really enhances that vibrato sound is reverb. And guess what? It is because of springs. Whenever you have springs rattling, the louder the amp gets, the more pronounced it becomes. Therefore, that's why when you're on a club setting or whatnot, you back that down. And when you're in the studio, you don't use reverb at all. Your sound engineers and your producers get really cranky when you do that. So you don't use things like reverb and delay. Those are usually added in after the fact. And the reason for that is because of harmonic overtones that will often sound like vibrato. One of the best guitars you can use to combat uh, harmonic overtones that these engineers love is a Telecaster. One of the worst is a Stratocaster. They have more harmonic overtones than any, especially at the second and fourth position. And of course, uh, the only other uh, pickup that I know of that has less harmonic overtones would be P90s. Uh, but anyway, this is my broadcaster. And what I'm going to do is just kind of show you how that becomes more pronounced. Once you get past that bright cap, and for you those that don't know what that is, uh, on your older amplifiers you used to have a bright switch so that your amp would sound good at lower volumes. You would just flip that on because a lot of times the older amps, when you back down the volume because the potentiometers were not that good, you would lose some of the highs. So you'd flip that bright switch on and it would sound better at lower volumes. Well, the bright capacitor in most, not most, but a lot of your tube amps will do the same thing so that you don't have that bright switch. But it does uh, more or less get bypassed when you turn the amplifier up. Uh, and you can always tell because you'll reach that sweet spot where you'll get to an amp on you turn the volume up and you will hear that 
extra surge kick in. All right, so we'll just do that right now. I'm going to bypass the, the bright cap and go on up to about six and hit a chord. Hear that little bit of a surge? That's just, that's just not normal, it's natural. It's going to happen but it will come more pronounced as you use the reverb. I'll turn the reverb up. That is the springs on the reverb that creates that more of a tremolo effect at louder volumes. You won't notice it on stage, but you will notice it in these types of recordings or you'll notice it when you're, uh, you know, at a, in, a, in real close proximity of your amplifier. That's just the nature of the beast. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's filtered out in most of your recordings, but occasionally on older recordings you'll hear it. Uh, it has to do with reverb, volume, spring reverb, and also intonation of your guitar, how well in tune it is. Uh, but even that changes over a period of a good time while you're gigging. That's why you're constantly tuning. So just kind of keep that in mind. No, there's nothing wrong with the amp. Uh, it happens to any amplifier that has spring reverb. Alright? Uh, I hope this cleared up a little bit more about this amp. If you have any further questions about it, please look at my other, uh, uh, my other video where I completely go through all of this. And I hope you have a wonderful day. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you become one. Have a great day.